Good day, chemist in Japan, de gozaimasu. Well, if you follow me on Twitter, then you know that a couple of days ago, we decommissioned one of our NMR instruments. And uh, the NMR instruments is, the NMR instruments are one of the instruments that we use to analyze samples and hopefully determine structure of the molecules that we make. So, the NMR instrument works by using a very strong magnetic field uh, to change the spin of nuclei inside the molecules and then we can detect their structure. Uh, I won't go into too many details on that, uh, but if you'd like to learn more, uh, go ahead and just read the Wikipedia article. It's very, very good, very complete. But uh, at the heart of these instruments is a very strong uh, superconducting magnet. And the superconducting magnet is cooled by liquid helium. So when these instruments are charged up in the beginning, they hold their charge for, for a very long time. In fact, the instrument that we decommissioned had been charged up for 20 years. About 20 years, I was told, since I wasn't here 20 years ago to see it. So we decommissioned it uh, last, a few days ago, earlier this week, uh, on Wednesday, because it's an old instrument and uh, a, lot of, a lot of its use, it was a solid state uh, instrument as well and uh, the only person who really knew how to use it because it was all manual there was no automation involved uh, the only person who really knew how to use it is one of our postdocs and he he is leaving to go start uh, a new job soon so um, they decided to go ahead and get rid of it the reason being is that we have a new instrument a newer instrument uh, to take its place uh, with a stronger field strength and more automation and can be remotely, remotely controlled from different places so they decided to just go ahead and they had decided to go ahead and just get rid of uh, this old 300 megahertz instrument that we had and uh, decommission it and get rid of it since no one could use it after he left well theoretically no one could use it after he left there was basically no point in using it and keeping it up because the liquid helium that cools the, the, the superconducting magnet is um, very rare. Uh, helium is the second most abundant element in the universe, but it's rare on Earth. And it's continuing to become more rare as time goes on. Uh, and some of you may have heard about the helium shortage. It is a big deal. And so uh, this is the first time I've ever seen a magnet quenched on purpose. Um, I've only seen one other quench in, in my experience, and that was at my previous university, bringing up a, a 500 megahertz instrument. It quenched during, during its uh, startup, and that wasn't on purpose, that just happened. So this is the first time I've ever seen it done on purpose, uh, quench on purpose. So the way they do it is they insert a probe connect up the magnet, uh, which is basically a coil of wire uh, that, has a, that has a charge on it, and then they let that charge flow out of the magnet, out of the, out of the instrument, and into resistors that are immersed in water, and they basically turn the charge, dissipated as heat, and then the magnet, the, then it, as the charge goes away, it's no longer a magnet and is free of charge, for the most part. But since helium is in short supply, they don't simply just quench the magnet and let the helium boil off. At this university, uh, we have a helium uh, kaishu, we have a helium mm, collection. We collect all the boil off of the liquid helium from, from the magnets. And the reason we do that is because, like I said, it's very rare, it's very expensive, it's hard to get. So, especially in Japan, um, which has no natural sources of, of helium, it mainly comes out of natural gas. It's distilled out of natural gas and then refrigerated. So, this, this campus that I'm at right now, and this cluster of buildings alone, there's four different clusters, and this cluster of four buildings, I've counted 20 NMR spectrometers. We have a lot of a lot of them. Uh, many of the research groups have their own NMR spectrometers, 
and um, but we don't have our own we use departments so we have three of them in this room that one right there is our 400 megahertz instrument the one that's right there you can just barely see it that's our 600 megahertz instrument and there's one behind the camera that's a 500 megahertz instrument these are all uh, liquid liquid uh, liquid probes and we have a solid state instrument that is our own um, but it has no liquid probes so we have to come down here to do liquid uh, NMR but we have 20 or so well nine, I guess 19 now because one's since we took ours down uh, that I've seen so far in just these four buildings alone that's a lot of liquid helium and a lot of spectrometers and so we collect, the, the university collects the boil off and then um, recondenses it back to a liquid. And that's how we kind of keep our liquid helium supply uh, going for our instruments. And I've been told that we have about an 86% efficiency on collecting uh, the liquid, liquid helium. And so what it does is it's, uh, it's collected and then here on site in another building, there is a, re a refrigeration system that takes the helium and recondenses it. And then we use it over and over and over again. And this really helps to limit our, our, li our liquid helium usage. So let me just show you a little bit. The video that I took is not that great. It was very spur of the moment. And I was very nervous because I was kind of in the guy's way, but he was very nice about it. I even tripped over his toolbox one time. And so my Japanese is terrible in, in the video as well. But let me just show you uh, the system that we have for collecting the liquid helium. And then at the end of that, I'll attach the videos that I took yesterday onto the end of this one. And you can see the end of the life of a, of a 300 megahertz NMR instrument. So unfortunately, I'm taking a video of a picture of an NMR spectrometer, an old one, that uh, at the end of its life, uh, had been cut open and is used as a, a teaching model. Unfortunately, this particular model is over at a different campus. It's not here, so we just have a picture of it. So this is, you know, the big can. So that's exactly the same. We have, you know, the, it's the big can. The magnet is inside, inside the center of it. So the magnet is down inside here, and it sits in liquid helium at uh, right above 4 Kelvin. So 4... Um, four degrees above absolute zero. So it sits inside here, and then it's protected by uh, layers of shielding, uh, layers of, uh, well, shielding, yes, to, to help protect us from the, from the magnetic field, but it has different vacuum chambers here to help reduce the heat transfer from the outside to the inside. And then finally here on this big outside one, this is filled with liquid nitrogen, and that's to help prevent the heat transfer through to the magnet. I've been told without the liquid, without the liquid nitrogen shield of, from the, of the heat that the helium would boil off about five times as fast as if, uh, if it wasn't there. So this, is a, this was a 300 megahertz, 300 megahertz, I think this was a 300 megahertz instrument there. And so that's what it looks like inside. There's just this giant coil of wire, just giant coil of wire, and uh, it's cooled. And when they energize it, they stick a, 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 an electrode down through here and it connects to the, connects to the magnet. And um, that's how they energize it. So we have different, so I said this is a 300 megahertz instrument. And I was saying that we have a 4, 5, and 600 megahertz instrument here. So just briefly, what does that allow us to do? This is a very, uh, a very nice um, graphic showing exactly the difference between them. So, Joel did this going from 300 megahertz to 920. And the important part here is when, I, when I, lots of people, when you say, you know, stronger magnetic field, they think, oh, the signals are going to be bigger. And that's not the point of increasing field strength. The point of increasing field strength is to improve resolution. So this is uh, glucose, uh, I'm sorry, raffinose, uh, according to this, in D2O, D2O 8 scans. And so in 300 megahertz, these peaks here really aren't resolved. They're kind of all just run together. And as, as you go up in, in field strength, they, you see this, the peaks become more resolved. And at 920, you can really see all the splittings and, and there's nice spacings between the, the different signals and you get good resolution. 
So that's the importance. But the problem is, is that as you go from lower field strength to higher field strength, the magnets get a lot bigger and the field strength is a lot higher and necessarily requires more and more liquid helium. So the 920 megahertz instrument, uh, that requires a lot of, it's a giant magnet, it requires lots of liquid helium. So this is the, um, the control console for the 400 megahertz instrument and as you can see the field strength here is at 9.4. 9.4 Tesla. It's the 600 megahertz instrument console and the 600 megahertz higher field strength and stronger magnet, so 14.1 Tesla. The 500 megahertz is actually the oldest of the instruments that we have here and its uh, control console does not actually tell us the field strength in real time. So uh, I think actually it's about 11. I think, I think it's 11 or so Tesla for 500 megahertz. So I like to use the 600 megahertz instrument uh, or the 400 megahertz instrument. It's actually the newest one. This is the, the 400 is the newest, 600 is the middle, and uh, the 500 is the oldest. Uh, but I like using the 600 or the 400 megahertz instruments because it has an auto tuner, and the probes are really, really good probes, and so they're quite sensitive. So that's why I like using those. So I'm using the 600 right now because I'm about to collect some 29, sil uh, 29 silicum uh, NMR, hopefully. <laughs> if, all, if all goes well. I really need to do some nosy, but I don't have time in my reservation to do that, so anyway. All right, so liquid helium. We collect the liquid helium. Let me show you how we do that. So this Intermar instrument is really shielded, so my phone's okay being up here on, at the top of it. This is the 600 where I'm on top of it. And uh, so this is, where, this is where the liquid helium, when it boils off, it comes out. This is the safety valve. It releases pressure uh, in case of uh, in case of a quench. It'll it will release the pressure. Uh, there's normally a slight amount of pressure kept inside, and normally, uh, these are the on the instrument that I, that I was using back in the U.S. This system was not here. Coming out the end of this was just a valve that um, would maintain one psi. Uh, pressure inside the liquid helium chamber, but here we have to collect the boil off and Actually about three months ago. They did a major overhaul of our collection system so before all you had was simply This this tube this tube going out to the bottom this valve and then this was just out into the open This wasn't connected to anything but now uh, The reason is is that under normal circumstances this tube is enough to collect the helium uh, that boils off very slowly, but when they were filling the liquid, filling the liquid helium, about once every six-ish months, um, the boil off during the fill would just come out into the into the atmosphere, and so we're losing a lot of helium, liquid helium that way, uh, a lot of the helium gas, and it's very wasteful. So they came up with a new method to to collect the uh, the gas even during filling. So they had to come up with a high a high volume system a high flow, high volume system. And so they came up with that and they made some, some changes. So from here, the liquid helium is then, co is then collected. So when it, when it comes out, it goes out through this tube. It goes out over there and joins up, with, joins up with the tube coming from the 400 and goes up. And then it goes inside this, um, this heat exchanger over here, this um, heat sink, uh, just like on a computer processor. The cold, uh, the cold, very cold liquid helium uh, gas comes in, or the helium gas comes in very cold, and it goes to this heat exchanger and warms up and then finally comes out the bottom and then finds its way over to there. And there's one for the 500 as well. Uh, and so the gas comes into this gas meter and then from there it goes off over into that that red valve up there and that goes off into the pipes for the collection system. Well, we have this gas meter here and it shows us how, how much helium that we have collected. So, so far we've collected, since they installed this new system, uh, 218 cubic meters of uh, helium gas from the boil off. And we're now doing very much better because we're collecting the boil off from from filling. So like I said, it's important to collect the, the, the liquid helium after it's boiled off. 
And the problem, part of the problem is, is that whenever you stick anything down into the liquid helium chamber, uh, it causes some of the liquid helium to boil off because, well, whatever you're sticking in starts off at room temperature. So we're at 24 degrees C, having to go all the way down to minus 269 degrees C, that's a big change. And so whenever you stick a, you know, stick a, a, an electrode in or you stick in the fill tube for the liquid helium, it has to first cool that off and to cool that off there's lots of boil off. So using this collection system we're able to collect a lot of that and um, it's really really helped on our liquid helium usage. So as you'll see in the video um, we have to stick the electrode into, into, the, into the instrument to connect to the magnet to bring the charge out. So there's boil off when he sticks the electrode in and there's boil off as the charge starts to leave the magnet and passes through the electrode, it heats up the electrode and um, that causes boil off and then the, the charge comes out and goes through resistors and, and turns into heat. But that, all, that, all that causes boil off. And in the video, we started off at 83% of uh, capacity on the liquid helium. And after we're done, we're down to, I think it was down to 50, 52% before they removed all the probes and everything. So we can't monitor it anymore. It's um, because everything's been disconnected and turned off. But, um, it was really important to collect some of that, but unfortunately, there was lots of back pressure on the line, and so we lost we lost some uh, some helium that way. But anyway, here's the video. It's not that exciting, I guess. I mean, it is exciting for me to to be there, but um, it may not be all that exciting uh, for people who are not interested in this kind of thing. So anyway, thanks for watching. で、これが押さえて、押さえて、普通にあの、こっち側の、そうですね、熱が今どうぞ。電流流してるこういう電線自体には熱が発生する、で、今ガスがポワっと出ますけれども。で、大元電気はこっちに流れてきますので。その水はあの、なるかなるかなりますね。なりますね。沸かすまで。いや、そこまでいかないと。あと少し。そうですね。早くなりましたね。はい。<笑> じゃあ、ダメですかあ、オッケーですよ、全然。その、わかりますこれ全部。<笑> 
、でゼロになったらどどうどうされますか。ゼロになったらちょっと一時間ぐらいこのままの状態で置いてから最後リードとかまあちょっと暑いんで,いで、ね、ちょっと自然放置で冷やして、うん、でえっ、ー、と解体作業入りますね。うん前はなんか早くなって、でも今なんかちょっと遅くなった気がします。最後はもう多分こうなります。こうなります、うん。完全にゼロにならないですか。ならないです。ああ、なるほど。今触っていただいたのほとほぼないんで。ほぼない。確認されていますか。はい。さっきもちょっとなかったんで、そんな差がわかんないかもしれませんけど。どうぞ。もう全然いっぱいあるんですよ、うん、ですねなんか悲しい<笑>なんか悲しいそうですねもうこれでもう終わりましたね